hello guys welcome to big book in this slides we are going to discuss the phylum cilantrata or nidaria this is also a kingdom a name mainly of phylum belongs to the invertebrate animals under this uh, we are going to discuss the general characteristics or salient features of the phylum this phylum organisms are also called as the stinging animals which is commonly known the study of this cilantrates specifically considering the stinging nature this study is called to be as the nidology coming to the first slide cilantrate signifies the presence of a single internal cavity called cilantron or gastrovascular cavity the phylum named to be as the cilantrata it is because of this particular feature that is single internal cavity called to be as the cilantron or gastrovascular cavity and later it is called to be as the nidaria it is because of the presence of the stinging cells nidarians indicates the presence of stinging cells so this is what the two different features which are unique to the phyla what is one is presence of the cilantron or gastrovascular cavity and other is the presence of the stinging cells the phyla is going to bag about 9000 plus species counted so here they show radial symmetry radial symmetry in the sense if you are going to take a circle and if you are going to cut the circle you can cut the circle in any number of the pieces so it is going to give the same size of these pieces all the time so it is said to be as the radial symmetry in the above diagrams you can see this part or the this rhizostoma this one metridium this one physalia hydra and penatula all this you are going to be having the radially symmetry if you are going to cut this particular metridium or the hydra or obelia they are this is the colony don't consider it to be as uh, the single organism each one is going to be a one of the sessile kind of the organism which is going to develop in the form of the colony here it is the single here it is the solitary so if you are going to cut they are going to give the similar or equal pieces even here in the hydra obelia also so here they show radially radial symmetry radial symmetry is the symmetry of a wheel so they can live in marine or freshwater habitats their habitats to be marine or sea water or salt water habitat or fresh water habitats that is the river lakes dams any kind of the fresh water other than the sea or the salt water they can be solitary or lives in colonies in each individual is a zooid so here this is uh, the coral reef which has been depicted here the diagram which is showing the coral reef which is developing that is uh, developing in the form of the rock but when you are going to take or dissect or you are going to separate and see they are going to appear like this kind of the colonies the coral reefs are going to have the organisms which are sessile and get accumulated in a form of the group of the organisms which are going to form or appear to be like a coral or the stone but actually those are the organisms in the mass of the group or individuals so in the next slide this phylum organisms or multicellular organisms so you would have studied the porifera earlier to this that is also a multicellular organism in protozoans you will come across the unicellular organisms so after the porifera the cilantrata is going to depict the multicellular organism 
where this exhibit tissue grade of the organization tissue grade of the organization in the sense the tissue layers are going to get organized to take part in the different bodily functions so here in porifera you would have observed the osteopores osculum or inner whatever the cavity gastro cavity and uh, many others form of the spicules those are going to individually form the tissue and also they are going to help in the biological activities of the organism in the same manner even in here the in this phylum cilantrata the tissue grade of organization is been observed but a little better organization has been observed compared to the porifera so here nervous system is diffuse system formed or nerve nets now here you can see this is the hydra which is depicting the nerve cells these are the nerve cells whatever the circular or polygonal polygonal structures you are observing those are called to be as the nerve cells this has been connected to each other so that it is appearing to be as the nerve net so these nerves are attached or connected to each other in the form of the nerve net now these are evenly these nerves are evenly spaced now here these nerves you can see these are evenly spaced they are having a ideal distance from each other so the functional of the nerve cells is very accurate statocysts are the structure of balance so those are also the part of the nervous system these are going to act as the structures to balance the organisms on many activities ocelli are the light sensitive structures so there will be certain light sensitive structures which are going to send the signal to the nervous system of this cilantrate organisms which is going to say that the light presence the amount of the light presence within the water medium so here when you are going to consider cilantrates cilantrates will present in all the levels of the water medium as we have discussed it is having the habitat of the uh, marine and also the fresh water if you consider fresh water bodies they will be having the enough amount of the light if you are going to consider the marine water bodies they are going to they can be um, the organisms can be present at the seashores or to the uh, level of the sea level to absorb the light or the organisms can be to the basement or the dark area of the seas also where the light passing will be very less so here this is what ocelli will help the light to uh, which will be the sensitive structures which will help the organisms to understand whether what the amount of the light is present within that particular level of the water now here they are diploblastic with two layers of cells outer layer called the ectoderm and the inner layer called the endoderm now when you are going to consider these are diploblastic in certain books or the websites or the other explanations they are called to be as the triploblastic also but calling this to be as the diploblastic is more better compared to calling it to be as the triploblastic because this is having two layer of the cells which is embedded with a jelly like substance two layer of the cells whenever we call a particular organism is having a skin layer or the blastic layer that is a cell layer so here if you call it to be as the triploblastic it should have three cell layers but it here in sealant traits they are having the two cell layers which is going to have a sandwiched form of the jelly like substance which is called is as mesoglia 
as this is the diploblastic in nature it will go it is going to have ectoderm and the endoderm ectoderm is again called to be as the epidermis the endoderm is going to form the gastrodermis that is the inner cavity or the gastrovascular cavity of the organism so here you can see epithelial muscular cells longitudinal muscle cells nidocytes within the epidermis sensory cells interstitial cells circular muscle fibers now when you see the actual explanation epidermis followed by the mesoglea followed by the gastrodermis and also remember when you called it to be as the ectoderm or the endoderm that particular layers should be having the cells of the similar kind in their function and structure and they are they have to spread they have to spread continuously so here you do not consider any of the other muscle fibers or sensory cells or interstitial cells to be as the dermis please uh, have this note and understand what i am trying to say so that is the non cellular layer mesoglea is the non cellular layer in between the ectoderm and the endoderm so this is what the nervous system and the diploblastic nature of the organism next is gastrovascular cavity which is the main unique nature of this particular cylindrons or cylindrates so here you first observe the images gastrovascular cavities here and here even in this image you will find the gastrovascular cavity here even in this gastrovascular cavity is here and uh, that is also the same structures so let me discuss the points these are the acylomate animals so cylindrates are the acylomate animals acylomate in the sense these are not highly differentiated as the higher organisms are later phyla like the arthropods you know later you if you are going to consider the higher organisms like mammalians in this organisms what will happen there will be a cavity body cavity so here for example if you are going to consider a goat or the sheep or the human being as you are going to dissect the organism the the upper layer of the skin is going to open to the cavity and further you will identify the organs within the organism separately from each other but they are connected with the different intermediate tissues to keep the organisms organ intact within the body but they are free from each other the organs are free from each other so here whatever the cavity which has been occupied the different organs within the organism that is called to be as the actual true cavity so that is not present within these cylindrates because these are having the cavity but that cavity is not organized with the different organs so here these are acylomates these are not going to have the cavity that is the meaning of this here the mouth is present but anus is absent you can see the point mouth is present but anus is absent they have a single opening in the body through which food is taken in and also waste is expelled out now here you can see this is the mouth from here they are going to engulf the food and also after engulfing they are going to do the digestion process and further they are going to throw out the food here also you can see here also you can see here also you can see the diagram even in this structure the process is going to form the same so the mouth 
and the anus is the same opening which is going to act for the both functions most of the coelenterates the third point most of the coelenterates are carnivorous in nature with a few exceptions such as the corals they get their food from other animals that live symbiotically with them symbiotically with them means that they are going to help the organism under which they are going to are going to feed the organism it means they are going to mutually symbiotic so they are going to help the organism and these are not parasitic they are maybe carnivorous but they are not parasitic they are going to help the organism for example the hydra whatever we are seeing here the diagrams is of the hydra here the organism is going to present sessile on a particular substratum the substratum can be any kind of the non living thing also or living thing also so here these are these particular some organisms they are going to get attached to some organisms who are slow in motion so here for example the organisms which are slow in motion under the water bodies or can be the crabs or any other form of the organism so because of their movement whatever the organisms movement these particular other coelenterates which are already attached on that particular substratum are going to move further to the different medium within the aquatic because of this moment these organisms are going to get benefited by their food and on the other side to whichever the organisms they have got attached they are going to get secured because of the tentacles present within them these tentacles about these tentacles we will discuss in the next following sites so here this is called to be as the symbiotic nature so most of the coelenterates are carnivorous carnivorous in the sense they will engulf the whatever the food comes under their tentacles and they are going to feed on that and whatever the nutrition is present they are going to absorb that so most are as being the aquatic they are the carnivorous only so here this is what the point further is digestion takes place in the body cavity which is the cilentron so here as we have said this is the cilentron within the here or the gastrovascular cavity cilentron or gastrovascular cavity both are going to give the same meaning so here this are going to digest the food here gastrovascular cilentron so even here so digestion is both intracellular and extracellular what does it mean intracellular and extracellular extracellular in the sense as there is the engulfing of the food the food will get digested here within this cavity so here whatever the amount of the food got digested here so after that digestion the absorption will takes place whatever the digestion happened here that is extracellular after that whatever the absorption is going to happen within the body of the organism or from the body of the organism is through the cells itself already we have spoken that these organisms are the tissue grade organisms so here what will happen whatever the extracellular digestion happens it will happen within the gastrovascular cavity so further whatever the intracellular digestion is going to happen that will be after the absorption of the nutritions which is present in the gastrovascular cavity after the previous digestion or extracellular digestion so that is what the meaning so here what we have spoken is written in the point extracellular digestion begins in the gastrovascular cavity but is completed within the cells of the gastrodermis the third point next slide so here as we have seen here this is the opening of the mouth and the same mouth is the anus which is surrounded by the tentacles you can see see tentacles are this lightest uh, structures which has been mentioned here here this is the ten these are the tentacles so this is what and the same thing has been dissected here it means that 
the organism has been this is the ls section partially longitudinal section which has been cut the organism's uh, uh, body from mouth to some part of the further body cavity part so you can see the tentacles here and this is the mouth and here this is the gastrovascular cavity now here if you are going to take a dissected part from this part as we have spoken the tentacles are going to protect or the they are going to protect the particular uh, harmful organism to the host where these cylindrates are going to attach symbiotically here what will happen within this particular dissection you can see this will be the epidermis mesoglia gastrodermis and further is the gastrovascular cavity here the empty space here these are the within the epidermis these are the nidocytes or nematocysts here so these nematocysts further enlarged or magnified to show it appears to be like this so it is going to have nidocyte and it is going to have undischarged nematocyst see this complete organ is the nidocyte it is also called to be as the nidocyte cells when it is going to act or show the action it is going to throw the filament it is going to throw the filament which is going to have the poisonous secretions so when it is going to discharge the nematocyst it is going to throw this particular spine like structure which is very lethal to the other organisms so here a particular handmade diagram of this nematocyst so here this is how it will be get retracted within the nidocyte that is the filament the nematocyst further it is going to throw when there is the need of it so this is the explanation that is the opening in the body is surrounded by tentacles here also so here not only here the whole body is going to have these kind of the needle sites remember tentacles have special structures known as the nematocysts which help in capturing and paralyzing the prey paralyzing the prey in the sense you can understand that how the secretions are going to be the poisonous to the organism or the prey cylindrates simply wave their tentacles and when a prey comes in contact the nematocysts inject the toxin that paralyzes or kills the prey nematocysts are the most distinguishing feature of this phylum now here on the first slide itself we have spoken that presence of the gastrovascular cavity or the cylindron or the entron and the presence of this particular spine like structures which are hunting in nature that is the nidocytes or the nematocytes so here these are going to be the unique features of this particular phylum so here these are going to help the organism to prey the food and also it is going to help the organism to make a symbiotic move on the other organism as i have already spoken about the crab the crab is going to lodge the particular cylindrate so here crab and the cylindrate combination symbiotically is going to help each other in this manner cylindrates are going to keep the harmful organisms far from the far from the host present and the cylindrates can feed on the organisms directly with the help of these tentacles coming to the next slide in this we are going to discuss the further tissue organizations whether its presence or absence so here we can see that these organisms show two morphological forms that is polyps and medusa whatever the structure you are observing this is called to be as the polyp they usually 
present attached to any of the substratum they show some motile nature but not freely motile so here these are the medusa these are going to present freely moving and when it is needed they are going to attach to the substratum to develop the further into the organism so you will understand when you study the silent traits in detail with the help of a single example of any of the organism like hydra or aurelia that is the jellyfish or polyps contain exoskeleton and endoskeleton these skeletons are composed of calcium carbonate exoskeleton is a or if you consider the skeleton skeleton will help in the uh, keeping of the structure of an organism so here as they are made up of the calcium carbonate these are going to act as the hard skeleton parts for this particular sealant traits sealant traits do not have sensory organs so here there is no sensory organs present respiration and excretion occur through simple diffusion the circulatory system is absent in the sense uh, like the blood circulation system like uh, how we animals uh, like human beings or other mammals or the reptiles are going to have that kind of circulatory system is not present so here when uh, we consider the point sealant traits do not have sensory organs the sensory organs what we have discussed during the nervous system here stastosis of the structures of balance ocelli are the light sensitive structures these are different from what it is mentioned to be as those are the cysts or the cells these are mentioned to be as the organs so here there is a two different understandings so here there is no sensory organs in this now here reproduction reproduction will takes place both by asexually and sexual methods asexual reproduction or by budding and regeneration sexual reproduction is seen in medusa form through gametic where fusion of the sperm and the eggs is going to takes place some are monoecious some are dioecious so here larvae free swimming when it is going to form the larvae it is going to form the free swimming when you are going to consider after fusion of the egg and the sperm the formation of the larvae is going to take place that also is the meaning development is indirect as there are one or two larval forms so here direct development is nothing but development of the organism into the adult directly but when you are going to consider there are two different stages or three different stages of the development which can be identified so that is called to be as the indirect development so this is what the thing now here with the help of the diagrams or the pictures we will understand this is the budding asexual reproduction that is the budding where you can see initiation of a bird appearance of hypostoma and tentacles advanced bud newly formed basal disc further it is going to detach and it is going to form, survive as the adult now here this is regeneration if you are going to cut the organism into two as you are going to see here this is the parental organism you have been cut this into the three parts not two three parts this center part is going to develop both the anterior and posterior part and it is going to develop like this and here it is going to develop into like this if you are going to cut the organism into to here at this particular anterior part it is going to develop like this with the two anterior positions the other two parts are going to develop the respective part which is not present so 
this all this is going to develop the posterior part this is going to develop the anterior part now if you are going to observe asexual that is the sexual form of the reproduction that is a polyp is going to develop a particular part which is called to be as the medusa so here it is going to appear like a thin umbrella like structure if the organism is dioecious it is going to have both the male and the female parts within the colony that is the whatever the organism is there so the formation of this medusa there will be the female medusa which is going to give the egg and there will be the male medusa which is going to give the sperm so here they are going to fuse to form the embryo and then further it is going to form the planula that is the stage and further it is going to form the organism and it is going to develop into the colony as i already said that this is the colony this is not the single organism remember so here this is how the sexual reproduction takes place this is about the ovalia and further if you are going to see within the jellyfish in jellyfish also the phenomena remains to be the same so further in this uh, phylum the classes or the classification is going to be hydrozoa scyphozoa anthozoa these classes will be discussed in the different group of slides with the particular examples and we are going to upload this so here i thank you for tuning to our big book on youtube and also on the facebook and uh, following us and subscribing to our channel and helping us to promote and also uh, learning from our whatever the sources we are developing for your better use thank you and uh, help us by providing the topics to which you need the explanation and uh, if you are liking our slides or the video logs please spread with your friends and also ask your friends to subscribe to our channel and also provide and uh, provide a single like on each of the videos which you are already uh, seen or watched on our youtube channel so thank you and be tuned